Mr. President, are you looking for a commitment from the executives today to spend some of the capital that they're sitting on toward job creation? I am looking forward to getting good ideas from them, uh, but I definitely am going to uh, talk to them about how we can get more hiring out there. That was President Obama and his intention for today's CEO summit. Will wooing Wall Street help to woo Washington? It's an odd courtship for President Obama given his past rhetoric over this issue. But that was the scene at the White House earlier today, a parade of top CEOs invited by the president, hoping to get them on board to help the president's economic platform and speed the recovery to our Freedom Fighters, Fox Business Network senior correspondent, and my good buddy, Charlie Gasparino, radio host Leslie Marshall, and Loyola University in New Orleans assistant professor of economics, Dan D'Amico. Charlie, you wrote a book about all of this called Bought and Paid For. What is the relationship generally between this president, a liberal Democrat, some would say a socialist, and these CEOs? Well, it, 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 CEO, corporate America openly embraced Barack Obama like never before. I mean, it, it, most of the money from corporate America you know, Wall Street, but not just Wall Street. Big major, major, major companies. GE, big, big example, uh, went to Barack Obama. Right. Um, generally, it's been a very good relationship. Um, I will say this: with the, the subtext of all this meeting with these guys is to get them to take the the cash that's building up on their balance sheet and hire people. And what they're going to tell him, what they've been telling him, because there's been these meetings for the last half a year. Right. They've been telling us like cut regulations, stop taxing us, and we'll use some of that cash and put people to work. Leslie Marshall, who knows more about operating these corporations? The CEOs that have been doing it for years or that have been uh, elected by the, uh, uh, hired by the board of directors, elected by the shareholders, or the president of the United States that wants to plan the economy centrally from Washington? Well, Judge, no questions. The, the, the CEOs of these corporations know what to do with the private sector. Remember, when it comes to job creation and, and really getting this economy to move faster in the right direction, we rely on the private sector to do that, not the public sector and the government. So I think this is a smart move because the president, in a sense, is talking to people that do know that area better. We're backing him and need to provide jobs listening. with this break that they didn't do the past 10 years. Yeah, I wonder but if the, the corporations president, didn't listen. But I wonder if the years. president, as Charlie points out, is even listening to them because he wants to raise their taxes, right? He wants them to have less money yeah. to invest. Leslie Marshall, doesn't he? Well, Judge, I don't know about you. What that whole take one day or two year at a time kind of concept? Judge, right. Uh, but right Judge, now they're going to get the break and they're going to get the Judge, money and they're going to get the tax point. break. Go ahead, about, about five months ago, Rahm Emanuel spoke to a CEO of a Fortune 20 company, and he asked that CEO, I know the guy's name, right. it was given to me on background, why aren't you hiring more people? That CEO said, your regulations is gonna cost me a billion, right. your taxes is gonna cost me a half billion, and this other stuff is gonna cost me another billion. Uh, Professor D'Amico, I wonder if Joe Biden was there, because when they talked to BP, and he was there, a shakedown occurred. He said, give us 20 billion or we're t we'll take it from you. Stated differently, what business does the President of the United States have in telling CEOs of publicly traded corporations how to run their businesses? None whatsoever, Judge. This micromanagement is really worrisome. And the people who suffer are going to be uh, the consumers, the employees, and small business owners. Small businesses are going to have a harder time competing and entering the marketplace when the bigger businesses yeah, they have don't a even... hand in framing the legislation. And you're right. And they consumers don't even this... and if you notice, consumers and employees aren't going to get uh, good products when when we're protecting these large scale companies. Charlie, like, just have a few seconds. He's, he's absolutely General right. Motors if you notice, Act. if you notice, he's absolutely right. If you notice, small businesses do not have a seat at that table. Correct, correct. Uh, D'Amico, Marshall, Gasparino, stick with us. Many of the 50 states need Washington's cash to stay afloat. But hear why it would, what would happen if they were freed from the government's grip. Back with my freedom fighters next. States have burned through almost all the federal funding they received through the stimulus laws. And with the GOP Congress about to control the purse strings, most believe that the gravy train is now over. That has my freedom fighters wondering if that's such a bad thing, because this should make the states more independent of the federal government, which is exactly how the founding fathers wanted it. Back with Gasparino, Marshall, and D'Amico. Uh, Professor D'Amico, to you first. Does the federal government have any business bailing out the states? And when they do bail out the states, you know the strings that they attach to it. You know, when the federal government bails out GM, we get ugly cars that, that uh, have bad gas mileage. But when they bail out these states, we get failing school systems and terrible roads. And they make our cities really bad places to live. 
I mean, we've tried doing lots. Let's try doing nothing. Uh, Leslie, should the federal government bail out the states? Because if the GOP Congress says to California or to New Jersey or states that are really in deep economic trouble, no, might those states just go to the Federal Reserve and get some cash there and continue their, their profligate spending that way? Well, you know what's terrible, judges? I agree with what you said the founding forefathers uh, framed originally, and that the state should be sovereign and independent of federal government. The problem is it's almost like an addiction to crack. They're going to have to get their money from somewhere, whether it's the Federal Reserve or where do they go. When you talk about education, I'm living in number 48 out of 50 in the state of California when you look at education. Right. So now what are they doing here in California? They're going to corporations to advertise in the schools. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, so with education did, did I, alone, is that the future? Go ahead, go, go ahead Charlie. Did, did I miss a news flash? Are the states actually going to the Fed right now? Well, the state... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I something. Look, look Ben uh, Bernanke yeah. says QE2 is not going to increase the monetary supply. He can do anything he wants with the power they're, he has. They're not, they're not doing that yet. You're right. If you can bail out small companies that we haven't even heard of during the financial crisis. Correct. Correct. Um, you know, listen, but should the Congress be bailing out the states? I, yeah, I don't think so. I really do. Listen, if you think about it, New York, if New York ever goes down the, <laughs> goes down the tube, they've gotten two bailouts. They got the financial, the, 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 the bailouts from, from the Wall Street meltdown in 2008, then they get another bailout. It really, it irks me to think that somebody in Iowa has got to pay bills for New York State, you know, for the liberal government of New York State. Do, do you state. remember some of these cases, Professor D'Amico, where the government would say, we will, the federal government will pave all the highways in your states if you lower the speed limit, if you change the blood alcohol level for drunk driving. It's a way for the Congress to compel the states to do something that even the Congress admits it can't do under the Constitution. Are we about That's to see more of this or less of it? Well, that's exactly what happened here in Louisiana, but I think that this fear of companies coming into our traditional government uh, provisions uh, should be welcome. Charters, privatizations, voucher programs, we should be experimenting with all of them. We don't know what's going to work and where and when, but throwing money at this problem eliminates the incentive for creative experimentation. Uh, we need to start thinking about how we can provide schools, roads, police, etc., without government. D'Amico, Marshall, Gasparini.